Hello and welcome to my video series of MolBio Explained in 3 Minutes where I explain a concept of molecular biology in less than 3 minutes or so. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Today we'll talk about multiplex PCR. The name suggests as if performing many separate PCR reactions all together in one reaction, right? Exactly. So multiplex PCR is the simultaneous detection of multiple targets in a single reaction well with a different pair of primer sets for each target. So let me tell you it in a simpler way. So let's say in this PCR reaction tube, you want to detect all these four targets. So obviously you can detect them by using dedicated primer sets against them and all of these is happening inside one PCR machine, one PCR tube. And when you run the gel, you can separate these products on the gel given that they have distinct size. And there are many criteria which would be important for multiplex PCR. In this video, we would learn about that. So first, let's learn what is different in terms of a normal PCR versus a multiplex PCR. So let's set up a multiplex PCR reaction. So the biggest difference is the template DNA. So obviously here the template DNA would be from multiple sources. So you would ex expect different type of targets present in that DNA. Obviously the forward and primer uh, and the reverse primer would be a combination of many sets, right? So here there would be several forward primers and several reverse primers, each dedicated to one specific target. Then DNTP would be common, TAC polymerase and MgCl2 containing buffer would be necessary just like any other PCR reaction. Now the key focus of this PCR process is the forward and reverse primer sets. So few things we need to understand while designing these kind of PCR reaction. First of all, this forward and reverse primer sets should have same annealing temperature during this PCR cycle. Otherwise, some would amplify and some target would not be amplified. And that is not our goal. We want all of these targets to be amplified. So one particular optimum temperature need to be fixed. And that can be achieved via gradient PCR, which I have discussed earlier. You can get the video in I button. Then, the primer design should ensure that all primers are highly, highly specific. Otherwise, there could be a misinterpretation. And the amplicon size should not differ too much because if you have a big amplicon versus a small amplicon, then the polymerization time has to be optimized in such a way that both these targets can be amplified, not only one and not the other. So these are the criteria that we need to understand while setting up a multiplex PCR. So let's talk about some application of multiplex PCR. First of all, pathogen identification, high throughput SNP genotyping, mutation analysis, gene deletion analysis, linkage analysis, and many more. So let me take one example and try to explain it in a detailed way. So let's say you are infected by a respiratory virus. Now, you can be infected by a combination of many viruses, right? Or maybe one virus has infected you at that point of time. You want to understand that which viruses has infected you. And in order to understand that, you are going to get your nasal swab done. And from your nasal swab, RNA would be extracted and cDNA would be prepared. And let's say in a diagnostic lab, they would test for virus A, B, C or D's presence. Now, if virus A, B, and C, D are present, then there would be respective genes which are unique to them present in this cDNA sample, right? Exactly. Now, from this sample, using unique primer set, all of these amplicons can be amplified. If these targets are present, then there would be a band. If they are not present, then there would be no band. And that can be determined using this PCR reaction. Multiplexing ensures that with even small amount of sample, a lot of information can be achieved. So this is a hypothetical result. So here, look at these three patients. In patient one, you would see bands corresponding to all these viral strains. So if patient one is unfortunately infected with all of these viruses, which could be dangerous. In contrast, patient two and three are selectively infected by different viruses strain. For example, 
patient 3 is infected by only virus A strain and patient 2 is infected with only virus D and virus B strain, not the other ones. So multiplexing PCR can give us these kind of advantages that we have talked about so far. So I hope this video was informative. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.